I keep seeing comments on social media where people are talking about fruit on bags and they're saying things like, why do they think we want fruit on bags? And recently the New York Times published an article about the hottest coat of the season and it's a black coat plastered with pasta. So what's going on here? What am I missing? I've done a little digging and in this video we're gonna talk about food and fashion and why it's so hot right now. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos, and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community post on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. So I'm pretty sure I saw these comments about the fruit on bags in Facebook groups, and I'm pretty sure that it was Coach Facebook groups, but I haven't been able to find any examples of this. It's possible it was Louis Vuitton or something else, but I've been in the Coach groups more lately. The only example I have seen is that the Coach outlet recently released a version of strawberry bags. It's a whole line of things that have strawberries on them. And I've seen Coach do things like this before and lots of other companies, so I'm not sure if if that is what people are talking about, I'm not sure what people are so up in arms about. But if it's not, and I feel like it's not, I feel like there's something I'm missing here, something new, please let me know if you know what it is, because I would like to figure out what that is. But that's where the idea of this video started, and then this New York Times article came up about this jacket with pasta on it. It's from Rachel Antonoff, and it retailed for $425, and the article said it had already sold out four times and I went to the website and it's currently sold out. I think they did have some in an extra small size, but it's just black and then it has this yellow farfalle or bow tie pasta plastered all over it. Not my style, not sure why this is so trendy right now, but that's what led me to start researching and try to figure that out for this video. That article does say basically that it's a conversation piece and that the trend of food on clothes became popular during this COVID era where people are working from home and doing meetings and they got tired of boring solid color clothes or regular pattern clothes, whatever. They got tired of it and started wanting to wear more interesting things in these virtual meetings. And that's what the article says, but I beg to differ. I feel like this trend with food on clothes and wearing food in different ways has been around for much, 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 much longer than the COVID times. Because if you just think about it for a second, starting with the Coach example with the strawberries on bags, Coach and plenty of other people have also done cherries on bags. Coach does apples on bags because they're a New York company, the Big Apple. They use apples a lot because of that. They also have a green apple-shaped bag in their fall-winter 2023 runway show. And I was wondering maybe that's what people were talking about with the fruit bags, but they have lots of shaped bags in that show and they're not all food. There's like a dog bone and a star and a crescent moon and a heart, I think. There wasn't really a lot of fruit as far as I saw. And besides apples and cherries, strawberries, we also see lemons all over the place, especially during spring-summer. But when I think back to my my childhood, I also think about going to Claire's, which is a kid's jewelry store here in the States, and I remember little plastic earrings that were shaped like ice cream cones or popsicles or other kinds of foods that kids like. And I remember last year, Coach had very similar pieces on the runway, literally plastic earrings and necklaces and bracelets with charms hanging off of them, lots of different charms, hot dogs, ice cream, I don't remember what else, but food. So it seems to me that wearing food has been going on for my entire life, pretty much. And I was trying to think, when did this start? When did we start seeing people wearing food? I was born in 1979. Do I remember in the 80s having any food items? that I wore. I remember having lots of little plastic earrings from places like Claire's, and I think it's very possible that I had food jewelry then. I don't remember having clothing with food. And in all the footage that we've seen over our lives of decades before that, I don't recall food being on clothing or jewelry before then. So my guess would be that this became a pop culture trend 
in the 80s or 90s. And it does seem to have become more prevalent in the last decade or two. When do you first remember seeing food and clothing? Think way back. Let us know below. I'm really curious how far back people have memories about that. And in trying to find the answer to that, I was researching, I was searching. There, there are so many articles on this, by the way. And it's really interesting to read them because some of them are very surface level and then some go way deep and I'll go a little way deep. I'll go mid deep in this video with a couple of things that I found that I thought were really interesting. I found articles from as far back as 2002. Now keep in mind, these are articles on the internet and the internet is only so old. So things before then may not be there or may not be as searchable. But of course in this high fashion luxury, handbag world that we live in. A lot of us will remember the 2014 Chanel show with Karl Lagerfeld. That's the one that was set in a grocery store, a, you know, a grocery store that was built to be the set of a runway. And from that collection, we got the Chanel milk carton bag. We got candy necklaces and we got the 100% lamb bag that looked like it was packaged meat. I did find one piece of clothing that was far older than anything I've talked about so far. This is a dress with a big lobster on it from 1937. And by the way, I'll have that and all the articles that I reference linked in the description box below in case you're interested. And one thing I noticed as I was reading these articles and looking at images of food clothing, food fashion, is that the foods represented tend to be comfort foods, or at the very least, they tend to be foods with which we're very familiar, at least where I live in America. They're simple foods. They tend to be widely available. Things like pasta, cherries, ice cream, bagels, hot dogs, donuts, bananas, and they've definitely made it up there in the luxury world. So you have this thing going on with low and high, these low basic everyday foods that can mix with high fashion. So besides the Chanel pieces I mentioned, the milk bag, the candy necklace, the meat bag. You may also remember Fendi bananas and Fendi toast. And I'm sure there are plenty more pieces. I didn't even try to go in and make some kind of exhaustive list of high fashion and food because there's really a lot of it when you start looking. And on a little bit different plane here, I'm sure you all remember Lady Gaga's meat dress. And often the foods are incorporated into patterns, just like on the jacket with the pasta or on the strawberries print, but they're familiar foods, we don't see things like a beef wellington or fill in the blank of the fanciest dish you can think of plastered on a shirt. And sometimes those patterns are classic, but other times they're very in your face and they can be quite kitsch. Sometimes the patterns are subtle. I think Paul has an Oxford shirt that has tiny little red lobster all over it. And you don't notice it's lobster until you get close. He also has a shirt that has little dogs with bowler hats on. People love that one. And of course we see patterns on fabric, on clothing, not just with food, but with other things like florals, butterflies. And as you would expect, since fashion follows and creates trends, and since food can trend, you start to see trending food in fashion, like bacon on clothes or like avocados on clothes. I've also noticed a trend in the last few years of these companies popping up where you can take an image and put it on a piece of clothing and their software turns that image into a pattern. And I actually did this for Paul recently. I got him a shirt that has Baron's face all over it. And I think something like that is really connected with what we're talking about here with food being part of culture, clothing being part of self-expression, culture and self-expression being connected. So you wear your culture on your clothing to express yourself. It's a similar phenomenon to concert t-shirts. I like this music, it's part of my culture. I want you to know that I like it because that's part of my self-expression. So I'm going to wear my music on my shirt. Very similar thing with clothes. In fact, there are t-shirts that do the same thing. A lot of the examples I've shown so far are patterns on clothing, but you can get t-shirts that advertise for a Chinese restaurant, for example, or for sriracha or for Florida oranges. Food and fashion both carry meaning. Food is a cultural thing. Fashion's a cultural thing. It does make sense that they would have eventually intertwined. Food and fashion are also both basic necessities and they're also both basic necessities that have been lifted. So you can get really basic foods like a lot of the ones we've talked about but those can be elevated like the avocado has been elevated in American culture or with fashion 
We talk about this a lot with handbags. You can buy a $25 handbag, sure, it does the job, just like a plain sandwich would do the job, but there are elevated versions that may be more expensive, fancier, better ingredients, better materials. And it's interesting to see how this high-low and these two things have mixed in a variety of ways. Now, as I was researching this, I did come across a couple of negatives in this world of food and fashion. One that's really interesting, a connection between food and fashion is in the fashion world, at least in the last few decades, a lot of designers and advertisers, thankfully, are starting to get away from this. But there's been a very negative connection between fashion and food in that you have to have a certain kind of body to wear the fashion. And that has in part led to body dysmorphia, eating disorders, and certainly a lot of shaming of other people and of self. One of the articles said that fashion can demonize eating. In the Huffington Post article that I have linked below, the author was talking about a romper that had bananas on it that she thought was just super cute, but she was kind of hesitant to wear it like as an everyday piece of clothing because she was overweight and she felt like if people saw her in a piece of clothing that had food on it, even if it was just bananas, healthy food, that that would highlight her weight in other people's minds and bring judgment from other people to her. But she started wearing the banana outfit when she was walking her dog, and she was surprised to see how many positive reactions she got from people. Once people realized it was bananas, they started smiling, they started complimenting her outfit. So it was the complete opposite reaction that she was expecting. And I think that does connect again with the kitschness of it, the unexpectedness, that mixture of low and high, and the connection to pop culture. People tend to like things that they identify as familiar with them, and we tend to get a little kick out of it when we find those things in unexpected places. One more thing I would point out on this topic that could be interpreted as a negative thing is the trendiness of it and the quality of some of the pieces. The New York Times article about the pasta jacket ends with this. I'll read it directly from the computer. A bold jacket like the pasta puffer is ideal for temporary ownership. This is a quote from someone in the article who's a Boston area lawyer, and she rented the coat. She said it kind of only works once. You go to an event with the pasta coat and you talk about the pasta coat, but it's not going to be as impressive the second time you see it. Another person who rented this coat, an advertising employee in LA, said the coat was not flattering because it jutted out at the bottom and made me look a little bigger. But then the author of the article says, but with a coat like this, it's, re it's not really about the fit, it's about the joy. And that's what a lot of the articles kept going back to, is it's about the reaction that people have to it more than it is about the clothing itself. Of course, the higher-end pieces of clothing would be more about the fashion, but so much of this is trendy and is part of fast fashion. So that can, of course, contribute to waste. And hey, there's another connection between fashion and food. There's a lot of waste from both. Now, I don't have any food fashion in my collection, whether it's handbags or anything I wear. How about you? Is this something that you incorporate into your life? Oh, and I forgot to mention socks. I talked about t-shirts and you can make your own t-shirts and I've seen a lot of shirts lately that have food on them, but socks too. There have been, there's been this trend in the last many years with fun kitschy socks and I've seen lots that have food on them. And that's another thing you can have your dog's face put on. Anyway, how about you? What's your connection with food and fashion? And what else do you want to add to this conversation? I'm very curious to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hope to see you back here next time, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.